the Ramban is trying to teach us here is that money is not something that you can take with you. But the Chachamim give an analogy to give a person an idea of how he should view life. There was once a person that uh, got to Judgment Day and they accused him of a very heavy crime. Now this person, he didn't really know how to defend himself. So he asked his friends to help him. Called one of his friends, his best friend, the friend that he spent the most amount of time with. This friend, Mamash, they were like this for years, connected. He says, listen, I got this problem. I got a case against me. It's really dangerous. His friend says, sorry, buddy. It was fun while it lasted. You're on your own here. Poor guy gets let down by his best friend. He says, okay, you know what? Let me call my other friend. He's a really good guy. I'll call him. Hopefully he'll help me out. Call the second friend. Second friend says, listen, I understand you're in a jam, but best I can do, I'll give you a right to the courthouse. I'm not going in. He goes, yeah, but I need a defendant. He goes, hey, hey, hey. Now you're asking for too much. You mean to give you a ride or you will go pay Google, uh, Uber? Uber. Uber or nothing, or nothing. I'm going to give you a ride if you want. That's it. It's the most I can do. We'll talk on the way. Okay, you know, I'll take the ride. I'll take the ride. Fine. But he still needs somebody to defend him. Why? He doesn't know how to defend himself. All of a sudden, he gets a call. Sees a number. Oh, wow, I haven't talked to this guy in a long time. You know what? Let's talk to him. He sounds all down. He goes, hey, what's up? What's going on? He's like, hey, listen, I heard you're in trouble. He goes, yeah, how'd you know? He goes, no, I heard it. So, you know, word gets around. You need anything? He goes, I actually need somebody to speak up for me. To t- tell the judge that I'm really a good guy. I didn't do it. This. He goes, listen, don't worry about anything. I'm with you. I'll pick you up from the house. You don't need anybody else. I'll pick you up from the house. I'll take you to the courthouse. I'm going to go. I'm going to write a letter ahead of time to all the judges that I know, everybody that I know. We're going to go there. We're going to win this case. Because you're going to do all this for me. Goes, yeah, you're my brother. I love you. Brother, I haven't talked to the guy in years. He goes, okay, fine, no problem. Hey, he goes, the guy's so happy. That is what's called the mashal, the parable. What's the nimshal? What's the lesson learned? The first friend that he called, that was his best friend that he spent every minute with, is money. It represents money. We spend every minute of our life chasing it. We try to acquire more and more of it so we can get a bigger house and then another house and another vacation and a fancier watch and a nicer car and a nicer this and a nicer that. And we spend all of our lives just chasing money with really no thought process behind it as far as how much we're spending acquiring money and how much we're actually spending using it to the actual valuable things in life, like family, like serving a Kadosh Baruch Hu. We don't really take that into account. Why? Because we're so busy chasing money, paying bills. We're like uh, uh, blenders. We just eat all day, blend, blend, blend. It leaves, we bring more stuff in over and over again. You wake up in the morning, go make money, work, pay bills, go back home, eat, drink, go to sleep. Next day, go eat. Pay bills more again. That's it. Every day, every day, every day. You pay bills, you spend the money. You pay bills, you spend the money. And that's people's life for 70, 80 years or until Hashem takes them. That's it. They spend their whole life being a blender. So the money says to the guy, listen, you spend your whole life with me. We're close. But once you leave this world, I can't help you. Judgment day in Shemaim, that heaven, you're on your own. It was good while it lasted though. I'll remember you. But I can't help you. That's the first friend. Second friend is your family. Family, sometimes you actually end up spending some time with them. Sometimes a little too much time. Sometimes you become one of the girlfriends. You're with your wife so much, you become one of the girlfriends. 
It's her, her friends, everybody else, and you're one of the girlfriends. You go to Lamar with them to have coffee. Instead of go learn Torah, do something useful with your life, no, you, you want to talk with the girls. You want to talk with the guys. Every day you're out, go to movies together. Too much. So, best case scenario, a person leaves this world, say, listen, we love you, we'll take you to the grave. We'll take the casket, we'll cry, we'll cry, we'll cry for a year. Take the casket, bury it, Kaddish. That's the most we can do. We can't help you over there. Why? It was fun while it was lasted, but we're still alive. You, you're finished. Can't help you over there. That's the second friend. The third friend, Abu Tayyib Karim, the third friend that called him, excited to help him, saying he'll defend him, saying he'll fight for him, saying he loves him, that's the Torah in Ma'asim Tovim. That's the Torah that he's learned and the tzedakah that he gave that was actually valuable tzedakah, the chesed that he did that's valuable chesed, that he didn't do for the sake of kavod, that he didn't do for the sake of earning himself a name. Real Torah that he learned, real chesed that he did, kindness that he did for the sake of the truth. That is what the only thing that's going to defend him. Here, and eternally. If a person actually takes the story to heart and applies it to their life, they could arrive at Rosh Hashanah perfectly comfortable and at ease that everything's going to be okay. Why? Because you're on the right road. Even if you haven't been until now, but you commit to be on this road, you're good to go. Why? You know that money is simply a tool, no different than a hammer. You use a hammer for putting nails in to build stuff. Use money in order to build stuff. What can you build in this world that you can take to the next world? Torah. You're going to use the money that you have to build Torah in this world. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's worth it for HaKadosh Baruch to give you more of it. If you're going to use your money just to build houses, then Hashem says, okay, you're just building stuff that's temporary. 